It is Players' Championship Week on the PGA Tour, and that's a special week for my guest today. He claimed the 2010 Players' Championship, one of his two wins on the tour. Tim Clark was also the champion of the RBC Canadian Open in 2014 and had a stellar career on the tour when he was healthy. Injuries have always been a part of the narrative for Tim Clark three times at President's Cupper. And joining us, kindly enough, from his native land in South Africa here on Tuesday of Players Week as we record this. Tim, it's good to see you. How's the week going for you back home? Yeah, not too bad. Thanks. It's uh, been fun uh, to get back home. A little bit hot and humid here compared to the weather in the States as it's uh, coming out of summer here. But uh, it's always kind of nice to get back uh, and see family and friends. It was a small little town, village, about 30 miles outside of Durban, South Africa, where you grew up. I know you started the game very young. Your dad was the one who introduced you to the game when you were a little tyke? Yes. Um, obviously, growing up in a small town where there is a golf course and we just happened to live on the golf course, it made it just a natural progression for me to play golf. And uh, I guess from about the age of, well, I started playing at three years old, but from the age of six onwards, I was probably on the golf course every day of my life. And when you were eight, as I recall, I've heard you tell the story, you made a hole in one. And that's when you were kind of hooked. You got a little recognition and acclaim and you're thinking, well, this is pretty cool. I like this golf thing. Yeah, it was a crazy deal. We, we were playing in a little junior tournament at my home club. And uh, on the ninth hole, it's probably about 130 yard uh, par three. I hit a two wood, ran it up between the bunkers and into the hole. And uh, it was pretty special. And funny enough, uh, my father was was in the area, and he played the game for 45 years and never had one. And there I was, eight years old, having a hole in one. <laughs> <laughs> Who were your golfing idols and inspirations in South Africa, Tim, growing up as a kid down there? Well, at, at that time, obviously, Gary Player was probably the biggest sportsman in South Africa, period. You know, um, having won majors, and obviously that was someone I was following. But at that age, I, he had already sort of gotten away from the game a little bit. but. We still got to see him play a lot in the exhibition matches. I remember watching him out in the desert play the skins game with Jack and Tom Watson and Lee Trevino or Arnold Palmer sometimes. So that was always fun. But as you know, we've always had a pretty good history of golfers here in South Africa. So I even followed the guys that played the Sunshine Tour and some in Europe. And I, I always remember a, a huge hero of mine being Hugh Bayaki, who came over and played the Champions Tour for many years. Um, and I just remember watching golf with my dad and my dad said th that he really liked him because of the way he carried himself and his demeanor on the golf course. And uh, so he was someone I really looked up to growing up. And you would have been more of a contemporary of Ernie Els, who's playing some champions who are golf these days. I know you guys were President's Cup teammates. You were on that international squad three times. 03 was there in South Africa at Fancourt, the one that ended in a tie. And as I recall, you and Ernie were paired together in the first round against Tiger and Charles Howell for that match, right? Absolutely, yeah. I'll never forget that day. Probably b behind my uh, Monday practice round at Augusta as an amateur, that was probably the most nervous as I've ever been on a tee box was the first hole of that match. Um, but yeah, getting to play with, with Ernie, who at the time was the biggest name in golf in South Africa, against Tiger, that was a huge thrill. I remember hitting the flag on the first hole with my second shot. So uh, I got off to a good start and that kind of calmed the nerves a little bit. But another good Ernie story was, you know, Ernie was about six years older than us, than me. And um, I remember playing an amateur interprovincial, which is like an interstate tournament uh, over here. And he was hitting golf balls on the range there. And I just never forget watching him hit balls. He probably would have been uh, 19 years old at the time. And we all knew who he was. And uh, pretty cool to watch watch a guy like him hit, hit golf balls. And, you know, all these players that came before me sort of inspired me and, and, and got me wanting to play professional golf. Of course, Ernie and Tiger tangled in sudden death in that 03 President's Cup. You literally ran out of light. It was either <laughs> spill over into Monday or come up with an innovative solution. So Jack Nicklaus and Gary Player, the respective captain, said, let's just share it in the spirit of goodwill and competition. Do you recall what that... Those moments were like Tim, and were the players involved in that decision at all? We, I can't remember how involved we were, but guys were all kind of in this huddle. I, if you remember, they, everyone sort of came together on the green, and players were shouting from both sides. You know, some were going to keep going or call it a draw. But I'll never forget the sickening feeling it was watching those two having to play that playoff uh, because the pressure was just incredible, and. Um, 
again, Tiger hit, he's hit so many incredible putts, but the putt he hit in that playoff, in the dark, double breaker, downhill was, was one of the craziest things I'd ever seen. And then to watch Ernie have to make a straight sort of seven, eight footer uphill, which now under the pressure is even harder. You know, you, you never really want a dead straight putt. And he poured it right in. It, it was pretty incredible, but also extremely nerve wracking. And, and none of us really felt it was fair on those two guys to be having to do that. That was the first of your three President's Cup appearances. It was also around the time where you finished third at the PGA Championship one year, third at the United States Open, runner-up at the Masters in 2006. Tim, looking back during those early years on tour, was that the highest caliber of golf that you played as a professional, would you say? Yeah, I was obviously playing pretty good then, but felt comfortable in the majors, you know, I, I felt like I had nothing to lose and, and I got excited to play the majors, to be quite honest. But for a stretch of time, that was pretty good. In 06, I played some good golf because I think I won 05, 06. I won the South African Open, an Australian Open. I think that's when I came second at Augusta. Um, I was playing really well, but then again, you know, elbow injuries and that really slowed me down at times. You know, the, the minute I thought I was getting going, I'd be laid up for a few months with with an elbow injury and elbow surgery. Um, but then again, in 10, when I won the players, I was I was playing some great golf again. Did really well in the Canadian Open. So that, that was some good golf. And and again, when I won the RBC, I, I'd started to play well again, coming off an, a surgery just maybe two years prior um, and run up to Bubba at the world event in in China when he holed out from the bunker to <laughs> to get in the playoff. And then I think he made a 40-footer to beat me in the playoff. But, um, you know, that's just the nature of the game. You have your ups and downs. And unfortunately for me, it was always a, a, an elbow surgery that seemed to s slow me down as soon as I thought I got, I got going again, you know. It's a golden week for the players this week, Tim, celebrating 50 years. You made 12 appearances there in the flagship event on the PGA Tour in your career. Hard to believe it's been half a century since Jack Nicklaus won the very first players back in Atlanta in 1974, isn't it? Yeah, it's incredible to think uh, how, how quickly the time goes. It just feels like yesterday when I won that tournament. But obviously a special championship, and I'll, I'll get to watch it on TV down here. And uh, So I look forward to that, yeah. So you shot 67 on Sunday in 2010 without a bogey, by the way. And um, you were, I think, second or third to last group, as I recall. So you posted a number. And then uh, others like Robert Allenby and Lee Westwood were, were trying to run you down. But toward the tail end of that final round, Tim, can you kind of take us through the last couple of holes and that nerve-wracking, out-of-body experience as you make, make your way from 16 green over to the Island Green at 17? Yeah. I mean, all week I'd felt pretty comfortable with my game. I'd felt confident. I, I never allowed myself to try and get, you know, get ahead of myself and think about winning. So I was very comfortable. And on 16, I actually, I, I had about a four or five footer for birdie and I, and I missed it. And I didn't hit a bad putt, but I just didn't, didn't make the putt. Um, and then, like you say, that walk over to 16, you, you really, it starts to play games with your mind. And I've said in interviews before that that's the worst I've ever felt over a golf ball was, <laughs> was that hole because uh, all of a sudden, being calm all week, just the wait to the moment, it suddenly hit me what that shot meant. You know, make a mistake there and the tournament's over. And at the time, hadn't won on the tour yet. So I remember putting the tee in the ground and thinking I might fall over in front of everybody. You know, I just had this, uh, this feeling like my head weighed, you know, five tons. It was crazy. But in the end, I stood over the golf ball thinking, what should I move to get the club going back? And then my last thought was, listen, You've hit a million nine irons. Just go ahead and swing the golf club and don't worry about it. And I, and I was able to do that and hit the shot right at the middle of the club, exactly where I was aiming. And that was a huge relief because going on to 18, which I would say is the toughest, oh man, it's going to be one of the toughest tee shots in golf because mm. uh, left is wet and, and right is a, bo is a bogey uh, for, for me. So that prepared me for 18. I remember the swing on 18. 17 was an out of body experience 18 it was like slow motion and and complete feel of where the where the club was and how my body was moving and i, I hit the best t-shirt of my life on 18. you pumped one i mean it was more than 300 yards it was a big poke for you i, I remember on the way to making a clutch eight footer <laughs> to save par 
Um, but back in 17, I mean, at the height of your powers, when you were healthy, there were no better players on tour, in my opinion, with scoring clubs in, in their hands. And it's a simple nine iron, Tim, but yet it's not just a simple nine iron. Guys just get so puckered on that tee. It's amazing. They don't hit shots that are far worse, honestly. Well, I've said that. I've said that too. It's amazing you don't see – I mean, you see guys go in the water, but you don't see too many awful, awful shots. You know, And, and I think, as we've seen, the mistake most guys do is, is go long, right? The adrenaline kicks in and the ball just goes forever. And I think that's the hardest thing. It's not so much worrying about where you're going to hit it. It's how far you're going to hit it. Um, and that was my concern. I had a – was a perfect yardage for a 9-9, but I'm suddenly thinking, well – I could all of a sudden hit this 15 yards further than I normally do, which is exactly what happened on 18 with the tee shot. You know, so um, I think that's the biggest thing. You just the, the uncertainty and the uncertainty of the wind, because you know you have to hit the perfect number to to have the ball finish where you want it to. So yeah, it just plays games with your head uh, to an extent, way more than I would say number 12 at Augusta. Second man in the history of the players to make that coveted. Championship, his first victory was Tim Clark in 2010. Craig Perks had done it back in 2002. You mentioned earlier, Tim, how you were always comfortable at major championships. You look very comfortable at Sawgrass on the way to that bogey-free 67. What about your golfing personality allowed you to kind of settle into the round and the competition under the white-hot lights under the pump? Yeah, I don't know. I think, I think a little bit has to do with golf courses that play a little bit tougher that week, Sawgrass, it was later in the year. It was very firm. Every shot had to be precise. You literally had to manage every shot you hit from the tee to the green. That's what's so great about that golf course, right? Uh, there's not one tee shot you can just stand up there and, and hit away. You have to pick a spot. You have to even hit at the right distance. So when I'm engaged like that on a golf course, which typically happens in majors, I think better and I, I worry less about outcomes. I think I'm just... I play more in the moment, which is essential to play great golf. So that's certainly what happened that week. I, I, that's the best I've ever been for 72 holes without getting in my own way. That's for sure. I was watching some of the highlights. It was contested in May, as you mentioned, and it was for about a dozen years. Boy, it looked different. It was all browned out and fast in the month of May. And we've been back to March for the last few seasons. Uh, Tim, you've seen the Players' Championship at TPC Sawgrass different times of the year. What's your impression of what the best presentation of the golf course and the championship is? Which time of the year? I think for me, I always enjoyed the course playing, playing firmer, you know, being, being one of the shorter guys. Um, it made you have to be more precise. And on top of that, then the ball would run out when I was hitting driver. So I, I liked the firm conditions, but that week I, I'd, I don't know if I've ever played greens other than Shinnecock one year when during the US Open where they completely lost the greens. This was the firmest and driest I'd sort of ever seen them. So I would comfortably say that's the best golf I've ever put together um, because you just couldn't be off. And and putting was difficult too. And, I, and it was probably some of the best putting I'd ever, I'd ever experienced. So again, that just leans into that, the course being tough and me having to really think about every shot and be engaged. Um, but yeah, not to blow my own horn, but the scores I shot in the weekend there on that golf course, uh, by far the best I've ever, I've ever played. You can blow your own horn because that was some of the best closing <laughs> 36 holes we've seen in Players' Championship history. Uh, we talked about your injury history. Um, you had some wrist troubles early in your career. Um, you've had back troubles for several years now. Um, you're 48. You haven't played professional competitive golf in a long time, Tim. How are you feeling? And is there a hope and an aspiration that you can be healthy to maybe join the Champions Tour in a couple of years? Yeah, you know, w w during my career, I had, I had two wrist surgeries and two elbow surgeries, right? And each time you're out for three, four months. And, but I was always able to come back and play. And luckily for me, found my game pretty quickly. It, it, uh, once I did it once, it, it didn't weigh on my mind. I knew, listen, I'm going to have elbow surgery, fine. I'll be back in four, four months. Um, but with the back, which which happened eight years ago, it's just not. I've just not been able to swing a golf club consistently, um, unfortunately. So, yeah, back issues, I guess, are the worst. And and as we've seen with many golfers, once that goes, it's very tough to come back. But I still work at it. I'm still hopeful to come and play at on the Champions Tour. Um, that's the 
stubborn thing about us golfers. You know, we never really want to quit. We want to keep going and want to keep playing. And uh, you see that with all the guys, guys that say, oh, I'll never play Champions Tour. And sure enough, they're out there grinding away. And, and it's such a wonderful game that you can compete so late in life. So absolutely, my goal would be to get healthy and, and try and play. And, and that's kind of the job. I've, I've been working at it for eight years. I'm not quite there yet. Unfortunately, I've only got two left, but you just never know in this game and, and with your body. So so that would certainly be the hope um, to do that. Well, listen, there's a guy who wears Sunday red who's turning 50 uh, next year and has indicated that he wants to play out there on the Champions Tour. So we certainly hope that we see you out there when you turn 50 in December in a couple of years. And we understand you might be interested in doing a little broadcasting work, maybe with us on PJ Tour Live on ESPN+. Plus. I hope that happens as well. Uh, and wish you all the best, uh, good health and good fortune, Tim. Good to catch up with you this week. Yeah, thanks for having me. And, and you guys have a great week, too.